You're about to discover how to stop letting yourself off the hook. When the going gets tough, you're going to learn how to become the tough that gets going because I promise you, I know that you can do more than you think you can do. You can last longer than you thought you could last. You can experience more than you thought you could experience and you can win bigger than you ever thought you could win because you can develop that level of confidence and competence. Confidence, it comes from keeping your word to yourself. I have broken with my bare hand five concrete blocks on fire. I've done millions of dollars in sales in under an hour. Did not give me the sense of personal power what I'm about to tell you. And the thing that I'm gonna tell you, here's the cool thing about it. Everyone in here can do it. Who can do it? Everybody say, I can. I can. Let me just say, I can. I can. Let me just say, I can. I can. Now, here's the question. Will you? Let me hear you say, I will. I will. Pain is not an input from the body. Pain is an output from the brain. I'm like, what do you mean? Pain, pain is your brain attempting to protect you from what it perceives to be a dangerous situation. And so your body sends, I mean, your brain sends pain, sends pain to your body to freak you out. When I discovered that, Here's what the guy said. He said, I can prove to you that pain is an output from the brain and not an input from the body. He said, watch this. He said, have you ever heard of phantom pain? I said, yeah, I've heard of phantom pain. What's phantom pain? Phantom pain is when somebody loses a limb. They, their, their arm is, they get their arm severed or their leg severed, but they still feel pain in the severed limb that's not there anymore. So why is that important? because you have to be able to control your mind in order to impact your destiny. Every time you get ready to step into a new situation that is unfamiliar, I promise you, your brain is gonna send you a pain signal. And it may not be a physical pain signal, it may be an emotional pain signal, but it's gonna be a pain signal. And it's a warning, it's like, bah, 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 bah. warning, 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 danger, danger, danger. You're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. And if you listen to that voice and that pain signal, you'll opt out of the only thing that can get you the transformation you desire. And here's what I, you, you, you deserve to understand. Who deserves it? Everybody say, I do. You deserve to understand that there have been so many times in your life you could have gone further than you went, but you let yourself off the hook because it was hard. Nobody gets to have good results by only doing easy things. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because the only thing that has stopped you from being further than you are right now is your freak out mechanism has talked you out of all your chances. I told you this morning that if I had a chance to do it all over again, what would I do differently? I would get it done faster so I could enjoy it longer with the people I love the most. Why didn't I get it done soon? Because when I started to do it earlier in my life, I allowed my freak out mechanism to cheat me out of my early opportunities. I'm just not gonna do that anymore. If I could, if I could give you a gift, if I could give you a gift, the greatest gift that I would be able to give you is the ability to only give energy to outcomes you desire. That would be the greatest gift. Like, if I could get you, if I could take my beliefs about belief and install it in your brain, that would be better than any amount of money I could give you. Because I know how to act as if the only thing that's impossible for me is that something would be impossible for me. Do you, let me ask you a question. How many of you would attempt more than you attempt right now if you knew you could not fail? Come on now, be honest with me. Right, so now you just showed yourself the real reason you don't attempt more is because you actually believe that, yeah, other, I get it, other people can do this, but not me. I am telling you, the difference between you and me is not money. It's not experience. The difference between you and I is belief. When I look at a mountain that I wanna buy, I say, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy that mountain. 
you say, I'd like to buy that mountain. I'm gonna to try to buy that mountain. Or you say, who needs a mountain? <laughs> but when I see a mountain that has everything that one could desire in a mountain, <laughs> here's what I say, I'm gonna buy that mountain. Now I get it, Lord willing, I'm gonna buy that mountain. But my whole life is Lord willing. I, I'm not confused. There, if there's one thing, well, there are many things, but if there's one thing that going to a funeral will remind you, it's the illusion of control. <laughs> Did I say that too fast? Control's an illusion. Now, I may look like I have some control, but here's what it says. Here's what the scripture says. Riches profit not in the day of the death. Like, if I had to choose, between like being rich and losing my soul, I choose to lose the money. You can have the money. I'm not confused. Some of y'all though, y'all waiting to start living till you get to heaven. If God would have wanted you to start living when you got to heaven, you would have been born there. You have an assignment. I have an assignment because my life is not my life. I get that, I'm not confused. My life belongs to God. Everything that I am belongs to God anyway. I'm not confused about that. The money is a tool. For what? For expansion of the kingdom. Not my kingdom, his kingdom. I'm not confused about that. But I don't have to make excuses about it either. See, here's what's beautiful about an assignment. When you own your assignment, you don't need to understand, you don't need somebody else to understand your assignment. I don't need you to release me to my assignment. God gave me a field. God gave me an assignment. You can't fulfill mine, I can't fulfill yours. I, was, I remember when I was broke and I heard preachers preaching me into poverty and they were way richer than I had ever hoped to be. And I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? You're rich, you got a new car. My car has three different colored doors on it. How can money be that terrible and you have so much of it? He didn't have that much of it, but he had way more than I had. And see, most people think rich like too rich is the person has more than me. Mm, I wish I had some help in hand a lot. The person who's too rich is the person who has more money than me. So they need, if I had that much money, I'd go feed all these hungry orphans. But the problem is you don't care enough about those hungry, the hungry orphans to go make enough money to feed them. You just want to spend, you just want to spend somebody else's money to feed them. Real talk. Yeah, you know how to spend somebody else's money on, on giving. <laughs> See, I already feed orphans. We already take care of widows. I'm not, I'm not confused. The point is, kingdom expansion costs money. See, the first temptation in the history of the world was the temptation to focus on lack. Why? Because the scripture says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. When you steal, kill, and destroy, there's less. Satan is the God, little g, of lack. But here's what Christ said, but I am come that you might have life. Chai, chaim. It's actually, the word is actually lives. But you, you might have life, because you're not just your life. See, if you have children, those lives are in you. They're your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, those lives are in you. You're not just a life, you're lives. You're all the lives that will come through you. How do I know that? Because the scripture says that Levi, who hasn't, before he's born, paid tithes to Melchizedek while, yet he, while he was yet in his father Abraham's loins. See, what we, don't, what we fail to realize is that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren receive blessings based on our being a blessing and they receive curses based on our following curses. Satan is a God little g of lack and Satan knows he cannot block your blessing. So guess what he does? He mental blocks you from the blessing, because he can't block the blessing from you. What do I mean he mental blocks you from, the you from the blessing? Satan is a master of making people think good is bad and bad is good. Your friends are your enemies, your enemies are your friends. What's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. More is less and less is more. That's Satan's master deception. Here's what Satan told Eve, if you disobey God, you will be more like God. If you will focus on the thing that you don't have, 
that's lack, the one tree that they couldn't have. If you will focus on the lack, that will make you more like God. Ignore all of your abundance. Ignore all the trees that you can have freely. Focus on the one thing you don't have. Focus on lack perpetuates lack. I'm not afraid to give money, you know why? Because I know there's more where that came from. I'm not afraid to invest money, you know why? I know there's more where that came from. I'm not holding on to it. I'm not holding on to the seed thinking that it's cereal. The farmer who thinks his seed is cereal when it's time to plant will be very hungry when it's time to harvest. And there's far too many of us who've been programmed to believe that the seed that we're supposed to sow in our own garden is something we're supposed to consume upon our own lust. See, people think I have competence because I'm good at stuff. I'm good at stuff because I have confidence. My confidence comes, see, I don't have faith in faith. I have faith in the one who is faithful. I know God can't lie. He said, if you do this, this will happen. So guess what? I make sure I do this so this can happen. I don't ever wonder what's gonna happen. I've had so many people say to me, Myron, you have more certainty than any human being I've ever seen. Do you teach that? I said, I don't really teach it, but I can tell you where to get it. I said, I got this book. They know, they said, what, where does that come from? I said, I know what's gonna happen. So what do you mean you know what's gonna happen? I know what's gonna happen. I don't have to worry about what's gonna happen. Like, so many people are worried about, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? I don't know if it's gonna work. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? I don't know if it's gonna work. And so what they do is they drive a vehicle of their life down the highway of their experience with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. Would you like me to give you a formula for success? Everybody say yes. Accelerate into the curves. Even when you don't know what's around the corner. I was, I was born in a segregated hospital called Clara Fry Hospital. It was a post-Civil War hospital and the conditions of that hospital were so poor that I contracted polio before I was a year old. And my parents moved from Tampa all the way to Pennsylvania at a time in the United States of America where a black person wasn't even allowed to move from the state of Florida to the, another state up north unless they had papers to prove they already had a job. Being the glutton for punishment that I was, I decided to go to college. And I got financially withdrawn every semester because I, I never learned how to make money work for me. And a lot of people will act like there's something wrong with money, but the reality is, if you don't have any money, it's hard to make anything work in your life. See, disruption always follows intention. There are no exceptions to that. And because disruption always follows intention, a lot of times people get on the path to success and when disruption shows up, they think that's a sign that they're going in the wrong direction. But it's not a sign that you're going in the wrong direction. In fact, oftentimes, in fact, I think I can safely say most of the time it's a sign that you're going in the right direction. How many of y'all tracking? Let me hear you say I'm tracking. And so, so, so we have to learn how to press through the disruption that follows our intention. How many of y'all got it? Let me hear you say I got it. Most people take way too long to do the thing. People ask me all the time, Mayor, if you, could, if you could go back and do your entrepreneurial journey over, or if you could talk to your 18-year-old self, what would you say? I'd say, you are going to get rich. You're going to become successful. You're going to impact a lot of people. Get it out of the way. Do it faster so you can enjoy it longer with the people you love the most. See, too many of us go through life acting as if we think we're gonna live to be 972 years old. I promise you that ain't gonna happen. So you might as well be about the business now. When? Now. When? Now. Because it's now o'clock. It's now o'clock. Seldom in life can we be stretched. What's the word I just used? Everybody, what's the word? Stretch. Seldom in life can we be stretched to our full potential unless we're first broken. See, we gotta go through some stuff to get to our stuff. And most people are unwilling to go through what they've got to go through to get to what they desire to get to. How many of y'all tracking? Let me hear you say, I'm tracking. And so we come to an obstacle, and then what most people do when they come to an obstacle, they turn around and go the other way. And then they find a coach, the coach says, well, just go through the wall. They say, but it's too hard. 
Would he go around the wall? I would, but it's too far. Would he go over the wall? I can't, it's too high. And most people fight tooth and nail to defend their limitations. And I promise you, if you fight for your limitations, you will get to keep them. How many of y'all track it? And so, you gotta go through some stuff to get to your stuff. But there's no destiny without difficulty. There's no strength without struggle. There's no advancement without adversity. So if you'd like to get to something, but you're unwilling to go through something, you're only gonna frustrate yourself for the rest of your life. I recommend highly that you don't do that. What you do speaks so loudly, people can't hear what you're saying. How many of y'all track it? I got started October of 1985. I did not make my first sale until April of 1987. 18 months later, I made my first sale. I became the top salesperson in our office month after month after month after month after month after month. So just because you're not good at something when you get started, doesn't mean you can't be good at it when you finish. See, here's what happens. When you decide to do something good, like you, and you're not good at it, most people quit when they're bad. Well, that's not a good time to quit. You quit after you get six championship rings. Not before you get one. I used to weigh 40 pounds more than I weigh right now. And I decided, I'm gonna start working out every day. I'm gonna start, I'm just do 30 push-ups a day and 30 sit-ups a day, and I got down to do 30, this is gonna mess up my tie, but I don't care. I got down to do 30 push-ups and I said, I can only do four. Next day I came back. Guess what, the next day I could only do three. I didn't get stronger, I got weaker. But then one day in this process, I said, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna see if I can get up to 10. And I just, I, one, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, I can't, I can't. I can't stop, 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 I can't stop. I don't I don't know how to stop. Somebody stop me! Turn the hit the off button! Hit the off button! You say, Myron, what's the lesson? Here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. Repetitive use of a limited ability will always produce an increased capacity. Don't be deceived by your limited ability. Don't let your limited ability persuade you that just because you can't do it now, that means you'll never do it. You keep doing it while you can't do it. That's how you earn the right to deserve to do it. It took me a year and a half to make my first sale. And now I have thousands of students all around the world who've made collectively hundreds of millions of dollars. Because I did not quit. So now here's what I want to do. I want to make sure you commit to yourself, to who everybody say to me, that 10 years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you're going to keep going so somebody can thank you. You will be living what you're believing even though you be lying. What does that mean? I know that's not good grammar. It's a really good illustration though. Here's what that means. Anything I tell myself about a future outcome, I made it up. Who made it up? I. Uh, nobody will wanna buy that for me, I made that up. I mean, everybody's gonna wanna buy that for me, I made it up. Are y'all tracking? Uh, if I wrote a book, nobody would wanna read it. I made that up. If I, bought, if I wrote a book, everybody would wanna read it. I made that up. We go through life making up stories about future outcomes and we buy into them and act like they are cast in stone. Here's why. Because we don't believe what we say we believe, we only believe what we do. See, we have deceived ourselves into believing that we believe things because we said we believe them. 
but I don't actually believe anything until I do something about it. We don't ever have to tell anybody what what we believe. People can see what we believe by watching what we do. See, in life and in business, if you are going to win, you have to stop acting like you think you're going to live to be 917 years old. And when an opportunity presents itself, you must have a sense of urgency and you must act now. When? 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 You must act now. So the next time you've got an opportunity to take your life to the next level, don't sleep on it. Act now. And for me, my breakthrough moment happened in 1999 when I accidentally made $6,200 in one week. The year before that, I made $48,000 for the whole year, right? So I just made one and a half times my monthly income in a week. It blew my mind. And so I realized at that time that it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. And what that, what that looks like is 100,000 a month is easier than 100,000 a year. So you might as well just ship the goal. That's not hyperbole. That is fact. The shorter the time periods get with the same amount of money, the easier it is to make that amount of money. If, if, if I could get you to believe that, you know what you would do? Everybody say, what would I do? You'd stop looking at and stop looking for all the hard ways to make a little bit of money and you would only look for and only look at the easier ways to make a lot. You would ignore all that hard stuff you keep on doing because it makes you feel so much smarter. But there's going to have to come a time when you stop letting yourself off the hook. And it doesn't have to be here. And it doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be this week. But if you're ready, if you're going to change your life ever, there's going to come a time when you stop letting yourself off the hook. People say, like, for instance, people who want to quit smoking, they say, well, I can't quit smoking cold turkey. People want to stop drinking. I can't quit, stop drinking cold turkey. People want to stop using drugs. They say, you can't stop cold turkey. That's the only way anybody ever stops. <laughs> there comes a point when people who smoke say, that was my last cigarette. There's going to have to come a time where you're all in for you. You're all in for your family. How many of y'all picking up what I'm putting down? You are only free when you have nothing to lose and nothing to gain and nothing to hide and nothing to prove. The scripture says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Hmm, that's really interesting. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is not the interpretation, this is an application of that verse. When my word becomes my flesh, I can dwell among the people I gave it to. When my word does not become my flesh, I have to hide from those very same people. When God describes himself, he said, I am the Lord thy God, watch this, there is none else. Now here's what's really cool. God made all of us in his image, which means when he made, it means he made you to be you and there is none else. So when I'm talking about holiness in the entrepreneurial realm, here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stop trying to be somebody else because you ain't them. Be yourself. Stop trying to be somebody else. I want to be the best. I want to, I want to be the next Joel Osteen. There's already one of those. I want to be the next TDJ. Man, there's already one of those. We don't need to. We don't need two Tony Robinsons. We don't need two Myron Goldens. We don't need to be you, boo. Okay, you got it. So what I want to do for you is I want to break down a myth. There's a phrase that I have and it's called this, don't buy the lie, it costs too much. See, most people who are broke are broke because they bought the lie. What lie? Oh, a whole bunch of Time is money, that sounds really great. Only problem is it's a lie. See, if you go through life believing that time is money, what you'll do is you'll sell a whole bunch of your time for a little bit of somebody else's money. Or you'll waste a lot of time trying to save a little bit of money. Or you might have bought into the lie of the economic pie. And here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna ask you all a question. How long do you wanna live? As long as I can. How smart do you want your children to be? As smart as they can. How healthy would you like to be? Oh, okay. How much money do you make? Want to make? Not that much, just enough to be comfortable. But people think that if they're saying something noble, 
when they say, I don't want to make that much money, I just want to make enough to be comfortable. Why in the world would you not want to max out every area of your life? Money being no different, no different. It's really fascinating to me. People think that by them playing small, that makes room for other people to play big. I got news for you. People who gonna play big gonna make their own room, right? So in a, in a bakery, consumption, everybody say consumption, consumption, creates reduction, everybody say reduction. Yes. See, God does not live, he does not operate in a shrinking environment. God created an ever-expanding universe. There's no such thing as running out of resources. There's only a thing as running out of people who are willing to be resourceful. See, God put man in a garden, why? Because in a garden, you plant a seed and the tree eventually grows. And then on the tree, it produces some fruit. Produce some what? Talk to me everybody, produce some what? Produce some fruit. Now the interesting thing about fruit is, a fruit is a living organism whose seed, everybody say seed, seed. whose seed is in itself. What is the first thing God ever said to man? Be fruitful and multiply. Why did he say be fruitful? Because God deposited, planted, everybody say planted, the seed of an aspect of his creativity inside of each of us. He gave some of y'all a musical seed. He gave some of y'all a carpentry seed. He gave some of y'all a plumbing seed. Some of y'all a mechanical seed. Some of y'all a writing seed. Some of y'all a talking seed. He put a different aspect, a seed of a different aspect of his creativity inside of each of us. He did not put all of those aspects of his creativity inside of any of us. Why? Because he created man to be interdependent. In a bakery, consumption creates reduction, but in a garden, consumption creates production. He said, don't you want to be like, he said, he should be like a tree planted. Now here's the interesting thing about a tree. Trees don't grow in one direction. They grow in two directions. How many directions? Talk to me. Two, how many directions? They grow down and they grow up. They have to grow down before they can grow up. The part of the tree that grows down is the root system. The what? Talk to me everybody, the what? The part of the tree that grows up is the fruit system. It's the what? It's the fruit system. Here's what I found out about entrepreneurs. We all want to grow phototropically. Nobody sees the growth of the trees that's below the surface. The growth of the tree that produces the fruit, that makes the fruit possible, is done in silence, in the dark, in a lonely place, in a dark place, in a damp place, in a difficult place. Nobody's clapping for you when you're in the dirt. Nobody's singing your praises when you're in the dirt. Nobody knows your name when you're in the dirt. Nobody's read your book when you are in the dirt. You don't get any likes on your post in the dirt. But if you don't go in the dirt where none of that stuff is happening, you will never grow towards the light where all that stuff can happen. And Abraham Lincoln said, I will prepare myself and perhaps my time will come. Myron Golden says, your time is gonna come whether you prepare yourself or not. If you are prepared when your time comes, it will reveal you. If you are not prepared when your time comes, it will expose you. The difference between professionals and amateurs. Amateurs spend about four to 10 times the amount of time performing as they do preparing. Professionals spend four to 10 times as much time preparing as they do performing. You say, Myron, what does that mean? Well, this is what that means. This means amateurs practice until they get it right once. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Anybody who's better at you than anything, don't copy what you see them do. Copy the stuff you can't see them do. He should be like a tree planted. You gotta plant yourself in, in, a, in a business, in an arena, on a platform, in a niche, 
and stay there until your roots grow deep enough to produce good fruit. You want to be famous, but you don't realize that if you get famous right now, you are going to be famous for being terrible. I ain't mad at you. I love you. I want you to win, but you got to go down. You got to go deep before you can go high. And most people are unwilling to go deep. You know why? Because it's hard. It's hard. You got to go down in the dirt. You got to like, you got to start pushing stuff through stuff that's hard and you got to start squeezing, and pushing it. Ah, and the roots and that. And then you got to start growing the other way and start pushing through. It's just hard. But the easy hard principle says hard on the front end produces easy on the back end. But easy on the front end produces hard on the back end. And see what you, most people want the easy stuff on the front end. Life don't work that way. And see, some of y'all trying to skip cycles. Trying to produce ripe fruit with shallow roots. Shallow roots don't produce ripe fruit. It's hard, it's difficult. It's not just difficult though, not just difficult. That'd be terrible enough if it was, diff if it was only difficult, but it's difficult and it's dark. Now here's what darkness represents. Cause you know, when you put something in the ground, there's no light down there. I mean, darkness is a picture of anxiety, fear, and confusion. That's what darkness is a picture of. And see, we gotta do enough iterations in the dark where we make mistakes in the dark, where we bust our knuckles in the dark, where we bump our head in the dark, where we stub our toe in the dark, so that when we come to the light, we don't have to do those steps anymore. You're not just the gardener, you are the garden. And God planted a seed of his creativity, an aspect of his creativity inside of each and every one of us. And it's our job as the gardener and the garden to cultivate that seed. What do we need to do? We need to put some Isaiah 55 on it. People can, people can smell be it when they're being faked out, right? You can't fake real love. You can't fake real concern. You can't fake real caring. People can smell it from a mile away. I know I can. Like, people don't need m more people with more tactics. They need more, the world needs more people who actually care. It's really interesting. Uh, somebody asked me one time, I was in a conference that was probably about this size, and I was one of the coaches there, and I was on stage, and somebody said, Myron, what do you think is the best solution? There's so much social unrest, there's so many, there's so many social ills in our society right now. Like, what, what do you think is the solution for that? Oh, I said, that's easy. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now his kingdom is not a kingdom of subjects. His kingdom is not a kingdom of citizens. His kingdom is a kingdom of kings and queens. And if you are a man who has been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, God wants to make you the king of your thing. If you are a woman and you are redeemed by the blood of the lamb, he wants to make you the queen of your scene. God is a king who, who he is a king of kings. I'm a king who is seeking to serve people. And me serving them doesn't make me less, but me being a king doesn't make them less. And here's what God said. If you will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things, what things? What you're gonna eat, what you're gonna drink, what you're gonna wear, what you're gonna, what you're gonna put on, all of the things that are necessary for your physical life will be added unto you. It's a bonus. Something good? If you have something good, you have a moral obligation. Everybody say moral obligation. Did you know that an airplane which goes up in the sky, the wings are angled, what's what? Down. Why? Because in nature, down precedes up. What comes first, up or down? down. Some of y'all sound like y'all don't know what comes first, up or down? down. What comes first, up or down? Down. down. I showed y'all the other day the gravitropic nature of a tree is that it grows away from light and towards gravity. That's the part of the tree that makes the phototropic nature of a tree work. There is no phototropic without gravitropic. Are y'all tracking? There is no up without down. And this tree has to go down before it can go up. And your life has to go down before it can go up. Maybe that's why disruption always follows intention. You cannot find one single solitary great human being in the annals of history whose life wasn't hard before it got easy. Whose life wasn't bad before it got good. 
whose life wasn't raggedy before they had it all together. Not one. Do you realize in the, in the very first book in the Bible, in the very first chapter in the very first book, God set an intention to create everything. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. What happened next? And the earth was. That word was is not used to be. It's the word became. Without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Even for God, disruption always follows intention. And you want it to be easy for you? Why do you think you should get a pass? What happened after disruption followed intention? Here's what it says. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That shows us a couple things. What does it show us? It shows us when disruption follows our intention, we need to find a source of inspiration. How many of y'all have found a greater source of inspiration this week at this conference than you've ever found before in your life? Let me hear some lions! But it's also a sign to remind us to breathe. You can't speak things into existence. But what you can do is you can speak to yourself and install some faith in a space where doubt used to exist. And then you can take an action in faith that you could not take in doubt. And then you can produce a result that one now that you have the faith that you could not produce when you had the doubt. That's how it actually works. You can speak to yourself. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. You can talk to yourself. What do I say when I talk to myself? Say the same thing to you that God said to you. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, that's, there it is. Only God can create faith. After the disruption that follows your intention, what do you have to do next? You have to get some education. You have to learn something. What happens when we learn something? We can see things we couldn't see before we learned it. Education is light. Like, I'm not talking about the miseducational, misdirectional system, the government indoctrination camps, the child prisons. I'm talking about real education, the kind that begins with the fear of the Lord. By the way, wisdom doesn't begin with the love of the Lord. It begins with the fear of the Lord. God doesn't just have principles. He has order for those principles. Too many of us spend too much time trying to get out of the difficulty that's going to make us strong enough to stay there when we get there. Instead of getting from the difficulty, the strength that will give us the ability to stay there when we get there. Stop trying to get out of it and just get something from it. So you have to be willing to stomp on everything that tries to stop you. See, the reason some of y'all are stuck is because you haven't learned how to stomp your obstacles. You've been capitulating to your obstacles. You thought they were obstacles. You didn't realize that on the other side of that obstacle was an opportunity to elevate. And so what happens, he said, be fruitful, do multiply, do subdue, then and only then can you have. Some people would have us to believe, and it's just false. Here's what they would have us to believe. If what you're doing isn't working, try harder. Well, that sounds to me to be about as dumb as a box of rocks. What you're doing isn't working. So I should work harder at what's not working. God put inside of all of us a desire to have more. Your desire to have more money, your desire to have a nice house, your desire to have nice relationships, your desire to take great vacations, to educate your children greatly, that desire is a desire that God put inside of you. Why? So that you would finally yield and do the right thing so you earn the right to have the thing you desire. And so the problem with that, and yes, there is a problem, Every human being, who's that include? Everybody say that includes me. Every human being is already doing 100% of everything they can do who they are right now. And so what happens when we attempt to do more so we can have more, we bump our head on our inability. And we stub our toe on our insufficiency. How many of y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Why? Because God does not have a desire for us to go to a higher level where when we fall, we kill ourselves. So he's ordained that in order for you to be able to do more, you have to become more. So I'm gonna give you the scientific formula for success when you're ready, say I'm ready. ready. Okay, here it is. If you don't like the output, change the input. By the way, there's, no, there's nothing in the world that that won't work for. If you don't like the output, Change the input. You know what most people do? They don't like the output. So you know what they do? They do more of the input that's not working. 
So being is the input for doing is the output. Doing is the input for having. Having is the output. And when you understand who you are, you will be able to do everything you can do, and then you'll have everything you're supposed to have. Boom. This word identity is so powerful, I don't even know if you understand how powerful this word is. There's a thing that you've been walking around with called your identity. What's it called? Your identity. What's a identity? It's all the things, all the people in your life told you you are not. That's your identity. And you believed all the things they told you, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not tall enough, you're not athletic enough, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not dark enough, light enough, this enough, bad enough, right? You bought that. And you said, they said I'm not. So you know what you do? You go through life trying to prove that you're something else you're not to overcome the thing they told you you're not. But you try to prove you're something else that you're not instead of just going ahead and letting who you are be enough. And so you replace your lie identity with your my identity. And what's a my identity? It's a lie identity you got from you. Am I talking too fast? But see, God knows in the realm of time, in the realm of what? Time. In the realm of time, there is no such thing as the present. People say, be present. You can't be present. Like, yeah, there's no time like the present. Well, the reality is, there is no present. In the realm of time, there is no present. As soon as I say now, it becomes then. Now then, now then. Try to catch it, now then. Now then, now then. Doesn't matter how fast I say it. As soon as it comes out of my mouth, it becomes then. Time is ever evaporating. The sand's falling through the hourglass. In the realm of time, there is only the past and the future. There is no now. Try to capture now in a net. You can't. Why? Because in the realm of time, now can't stay here. In the realm of eternity, there's no such thing as the past or the future. There's only the now. In fact, eternity is the forever now. And that's why God is the I am that I am, not the I was that I was, or the I will be that I will be. You are the, the screenplay writer. Who wrote the, who wrote the script? I did. Everybody say I did. I did. Okay. Um, you are the director. Who's the director? Everybody say I am. I am. Okay. You are the producer. Who's the producer? Everybody say I am. I am. Okay. So you, you wrote the movie, you produced it, you directed it, and you starred in it. So you go to the premiere. And so everybody is on the edge of their seat the whole time thinking you about to die. And you're sitting over there all calm. But you, why? Because you wrote it, you produced it, you directed it, you edited it. By the time they see it, for you, it's already been done. What is a moving picture to us is a snapshot to God. Become hyper intentional. Become what? Hyper intentional. I said hyper intentional. What? Hyper Become hyper intentional about everything you say that follows the words I am. Come on now. Don't you dare say I am stupid. Don't you dare say I am broke. Don't you dare say, oh, I'm such an idiot. Why? Because every word, every time you say, whatever words you say, after you say I am, you're infusing those words with the power of eternity. Don't you dare to associate God to that. Your, your real problem is you don't understand that you are already bigger than everything you will ever face. In fact, the reason you are facing it is so it can show you how big you are. And the very thing that God has ordained to show you how big you are, the enemy tries to twist it to make you think that you're as small as everybody told you you are. Uh, come on now. You need to own the identity of a champion, of a giant slayer, of a wall knocker downer, of a fire walker, of a water walker. You need to own the identity of somebody with a slingshot in one hand, a sword in the other hand. If you knew who you were, you'd be doing way more than you're doing. And you'd be doing it with way less effort. You, 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 don't, you don't understand who you are. You don't have enough of the I am in you to know who you am. Oh yeah, that's what I said. So how do we fill our identity gap? The only way to fill our identity gap is with intention, intentionality. What does that mean, Myron? Every single solitary human being that I've ever met 
who is hyper successful in any arena, in any arena, they are hyper successful because they are hyper intentional and they, they focus on intention and ignore distractions. And if I'm going to be hyper successful, I'm going to ignore distraction and focus on intention. You say, Myron, are you saying it's wrong to watch a football game, a baseball game, a basketball game, a golf tournament, or this or that or the other thing, or have a favorite TV show? It's not wrong. It ain't, I don't know that it's wrong. It's just dumb if you broke. You could be reading a book, learn how not to be broke. If that approach doesn't work, I find a new approach. If that approach doesn't work, I find a new approach. If that approach doesn't work, I find a new approach. What, watch what happens. We fill the gap in our, our property with intensity. You know what's amazing to me? Being lackadaisical and broke. You think I'm intense now? You should have seen me when I was broke. I was showing up intense there. I was, I was on, I was on gear, I was in gear 11,000 most of the time. Why? I hate poverty more than any human being on earth. Hate it. Loathe it. It's an abomination to my very existence. And I was not going to watch other people live their dreams on the electronic income reducer while I'm living a nightmare. Ain't gonna do it. When I was broke, God is my witness. We didn't have a television. I'm, don't you wanna see them? I don't wanna see them, I wanna be them. I want somebody to watch paid to watch me live my life. What you think about money is going to ultimately determine your relationship with money and it's going to ultimately determine money's relationship with you. And I promise you, if you do not become intentional about it, your finances will be haphazard for the rest of your life. And, and it's really fascinating because most of the church-going, Bible-believing Christian people like that I know, most of them, pretend not to care about money at all, and it's the thing they work for the longest and worry about the most. Like, it, 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 it's, it's mind-blowing to me. Like, and then it's, well, money's not that important to me. If you'll lie about that, you'll lie about other stuff. You are literally spending more of your waking hours exchanging those hours for money, for dollars, than you are doing any other single thing in your waking hours, and then you wanna say, I don't care about money. You are lying. Why do you feel like you have to, because money, Wealth, abundance, has a social stigma because the enemy is a liar. The money is a bonus. The ability to have options is a bonus. It's not the objective. How much money do you want to make, Myron? I want to make, make as much as I possibly can living in alignment with my purpose. That's how much money I want to make. And if that's, if that's $100 a year, I'm good with it. And if it's $100 million a year, I'm good with that. If it's $300 billion a year, I'm okay with that. I want to make as much money as I can in alignment with my purpose. I want, to, I want to be as healthy as I can in alignment with my purpose. I want to learn as much as I can, be as learned as I can in alignment with my purpose. And until you break free of your need for other people to think things about you, you will never be financially free because you're not even socially, emotionally free. And as long as you are attached to the need for people to have a particular opinion of you, you will never be free. Maybe that's why the scripture says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. What does it say after that? Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Sounds to me like he knew who he was. But watch what it says next. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of service. He knew who he was so much he didn't need you to know who he was. He didn't need you to acknowledge the fact that he is God in order for him to acknowledge the fact that he is God. And see, you need for people to acknowledge that your motives are good in order for you to sleep at night. The only person that you need to be true to is yourself and God. If, you, if I didn't tell you something that I need you to think something about me, then why do I even care? Because the reality is I don't. And if I did, I wouldn't do what I do. If I cared what other people think about me, I would do something very different. I would do something in the booth in the back, in the corner in the dark where nobody could see me. And if they did, if they didn't approve, they wouldn't even know who did it. Because as long as you need people to think something about you, like you need them to believe something about you financially. You need people to think you're rich. You need people to think you're broke. You need people to think that you don't care about money. You need people to think that you do care. Whatever the thing that you need them to think is, you have no control over their thoughts. You barely have control over your own. Let it go.
stop allowing yourself to think these toxic thoughts about money. If we're gonna become hyper-intentional about our thoughts, we automatically have to be hyper-intentional about our words. Because the reality is, you can speak without thinking, but you can't think without using words. Most people take their past experiences, they project it on the screen of their future, they recreate the past and think they're living in the present. But what they're really doing is living Groundhog Day. Most people are living their yesterday today, they're living their last week this week, they're living their last month this month, they're living their last year this year, they're living their last decade this decade, and their life isn't getting better, which goes against the very first thing that God ever said to a human being when he spoke to man. He said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Well, when he said be fruitful, the, a fruit is a living organism whose seed is in itself. The, the ability of a fruit to reproduce is inside the fruit. So when God said to man be fruitful, he wasn't just talking about having children. He was talking about, I put an aspect of my creativity inside of you. Now what's really interesting is he put a different aspect of his creativity inside of all of us. Every aspect of his creativity inside of anybody, but he put an aspect of his creativity inside of everybody. And so that creativity, that aspect of his creativity that he put inside of us, it is our job to produce on the outside based on what God put on the inside. But he said, be fruitful. Now the other interesting thing about a fruit is this, because it has a seed in it, when you sow the seed, you don't reap a piece of fruit. You reap a tree. And the tree might produce 100, 200, 300 apples a year, oranges, whatever your kind of seed you plant. Might, once it's mature, it might produce 100 to 300 pieces of fruit per year. And I love what Warren Wearsby said. He said, any fool can count the number of seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. And so what we have to do is we have to make sure that we cultivate the seed of creativity that God put inside of us so we can be fruitful. And we can be fruitful and multiply because you reap what you sow, but you don't reap when you sow, you reap later than you sow. You reap what you sow, but you don't reap the amount you sow, you reap more than you sow. And so while you reap what you sow, you don't reap when you sow, and you don't reap what you sowed, you reap more than you sowed, later than you sowed. I hope y'all picking up what I'm putting down. And so God said, be fruitful and multiply. Why? Because multiplication is the natural output of the input of fruitfulness. So when God said, be fruitful and multiply, multiplication is the natural output of the input of fruitfulness. Like a fruit, a seed that you plant in the ground does not have the ability to only produce one fruit. Nothing in nature grows by addition. In nature, everything grows by multiplication. Which means, when God said be fruitful and multiply, the word multiply means to increase. But it's not just an incremental increase, it's an exponential increase. It's a geometric increase. See, there are people in the world who want to act like human beings are destroying the planet. But human beings aren't here for the planet, the planet's here for the human beings. God said clearly, pollute not the land in which ye dwell. But the environment isn't God. The earth is not my mother. It is here to serve me, I am not here to serve it. When he said be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, the word replenish means to fill up. Don't make the mistake of thinking that when a beaver uses its limited creativity to build a dam and a creek in the forest, that that's organic. When an ant uses its li limited creativity to build an ant hill in the ground, that's organic. When an eagle uses its limited creativity to build a nest in a tree, that's organic. But when a human being uses its unlimited creativity to build a city, that's somehow inorganic. A city is as organic as an ant hill, a beaver dam, or an eagle's nest. So when God said be fruitful and multiply, what he's telling us to do, he's telling us to increase and fill up the earth. Replenish means to fill up the earth with the multiplication of the things that we create. That's our job. So when God said be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and they said subdue it, what does subdue mean? Trample down, stomp it. What does that mean? That means trample down anything that tries to stop you. 
which, and if he's telling me to trample it, that means whatever opposes me is both beneath me and smaller than me. So if he told me to trample it, that means I have the ability to trample it. It's already under my feet. Now all I have to do is take the action to step on all of the stoppers. Today should be better than yesterday. This week should be better than last week. This month should be better than last month. This year should be better than last year. And I'm not just talking about better financially, but I'm including better financially. This whole idea that as you get older, you have to get sicker and weaker and broker is hideous. But if you believe that, then that's exactly how you're gonna set up your life. I know people my age who talk like they're 100. Guess what? They also walk like they're 100. They move like they're 100. You've got to, when things are going well, you have to be preparing for when things aren't gonna go well. When things, when you have seven years of plenty, you have to be preparing for seven years of famine. Here's, here's what God told Joseph to tell Pharaoh to do. When things are going good, put back that one-fifth part. What is that one-fifth part? 20%. When things are going great, stash 20%. Hold on to 20%. Because when the whole bottom falls out for the entire world, while everybody else is getting broker, you're going to be getting richer. While everybody else is starving, you're going to have food. So stop thinking from the past. The past is nothing more than your launch pad for your future. Treat it like that. The biggest financial breakthrough of my life I, I learned last June. I remember it like it was yesterday. And here's what I discovered, that poor people and middle class people feel like everything is expensive because they pay for things with money they've exchanged their time for. So they feel like they're paying for everything with their life, because they are. Wealthy people pay for things according to their creativity. Now notice I didn't say that wealthy people pay for things out of their creativity. I didn't say wealthy people pay for things with their creativity. I said wealthy people pay for things according to their creativity. Why did I say that? Because if I paid for it out of my creativity, I'd have less creativity after I paid for it than I had before I paid for it. If I said I paid for it with my creativity, I'd have less creativity after I paid for it than before I paid for it. But if I pay for it according to my creativity, then I have no less creativity after I paid for it than I had before I paid for it. That's why it says my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because when he supplies your need according to his riches and glory, he has no less riches and no less glory. Are y'all tracking? To like, when you learn how to pay for things according to your creativity, everything costs the same amount. Start paying for stuff with offers. If I, desire, if I desire to go buy a brand new house, I'll just create an offer and pay, it'll pay for the house. When I wanna buy an apartment building, I'll just create an offer and that offer will pay for the apartment building. I created an offer that pays for all my private jet travel. Are y'all tracking? So to me, my Rolls Royce cost me no more than this box of Tic Tacs. Tic -tacs. Cause you know what? I paid for both of them with the same thing, an offer. Oh, oh, it hit you, didn't it? It hit you, didn't it? See, and guess what? Here's the cool thing. After you create an offer, because you want to buy something, after you create an offer, because you desire to buy something, after you buy the thing, you still have all the creativity you had before you created the thing. Y'all ready for it to get better? Plus, you still have the offer. And so while other people were paying to fly the friendly skies, or the unfriendly skies, I was getting paid to fly private. And I've flown internationally private, and I've flown domestically private, and guess what? It all costs the same amount. Oh my goodness, how much does that cost? It costs you an offer. So from now on, every time you look at a price tag, I, I don't want you to see a number, I want you to see the word, create an offer. Create an offer. Create an offer. Create an offer. If you will be willing to make offers when you're bad at it and keep doing it anyway, you'll eventually become good at it. And eventually you'll get so good at it, you'll have it what? Mastered. And then you will be able to make offers without the use of any conscious resources. Congratulations. Financially, you are done. You don't have to worry about, think about, Get all excited about money or prices of anything ever again because when you master offer making, everything will cost the same amount.